we are heading for Quebec City and we're going to stay there for two days and it's our first time to go there so will be a lot of ventures and the learning curve, okay? It's such a challenge and adventure to park in the underground garage in both Quebec City and the Montreal. They have narrow passage and they're typically using one lane for the both direction traffic. So it's quite dangerous to me, but I don't know how they control or manage it. Another observation is that the parking space is usually narrower than what we have in the U.S. So it seems here like the uh, the cars on the, on the road is typically smaller than what we have in the U.S. Maybe that's to accommodate the narrower space of the parking lot. And I think the highway is very similar to that of the U.S. And usually it's just uh, very good uh, visibility and it's a uh, farm view or rural view. So it's typical kind of uh, North America highway. But of course, the trait here is the official language as a French versus that of the English in the U.S. The gasoline price is probably one of the biggest uh, differences here. So the 172 on the sign, it actually says 1.72 Canadian dollars per liter. After I convert it to the US dollars per gallon, it seems like the gasoline price here is almost doubled of that uh, in US. Here we want to stop by and try out Tim Horton which is only available in Canada, but not in US. It turns out to be salty and expensive as well. Also, compared to the flat rate tax in US, here it seems like we have to pay for two different types of tax. Both TPS and TVQ in combined, it's approximately 14% of tax, which is way much higher than what we have in Pennsylvania. I also noticed that the restroom sign in Canadian Highway comes in a smaller size and different colors than the counterparts in the US. And of course, here in Canada, interestingly, they call it out as toilet rather than restroom. We're almost at the Quebec City and basically it's almost three hours of driving away from the Montreal. It's our first time here and my first impression of Quebec City is that it's uh, less metropolitan than the Montreal. It has less of the high rising buildings and uh, somehow the homeless people here is more than that in Montreal. During our stay, we lodged in the Pure Hotel of the Quebec City and we were given the suite of two rooms and as a courtesy of the Pure Hotel, we were given the best view of the entire hotel, which is a church view. A beautiful day to start our full day activities. And we enjoyed the French slash Canadian style of the breakfast at the hotel. The food flavor is slightly different than that in the US. For example, the omelette here and the bacon here, it's obviously Canadian style. After that, we set our food on the Montmorency Fall for the first time. In my opinion, this is a must-visit sightseeing place for the entire family. The whole trip here is two to three hours with a lot of fun. Since we take the little one, we actually take the cable car. But there is alternatives for you to challenge yourself and do the hiking and rock climbing. We pay 30 bucks per person for everything, even including this cable car which is a convenient option for the little kids and all those uh, physically challenged folks. This Montmorency Fall is actually the three greatest fall in the North America continent. The altitude of the waterfall is 83 meters, which is even bigger than that of Niagara. Magnificent view. It's pouring directly into the St. Lawrence River. Here's a little patio for you to observe the overview from above. 
But of course, you need some coins coming handy for the telescope and the lookout. And if you keep walking, there's a memoir, Montmorency, for dining and the court circuit temporal. The weather is perfect for walking around in this place. And uh, during the stay here, we observe there's uh, some build up for the carnival upcoming. And my video highlights up front just captured the tube sliding, which is fun. and some free activity for the kids to have fun and also for the adults to take a nice little break It's always great to see everything from above. Here's a big suspension bridge across the fall. Thrilling and refreshing. Alternatively, you can take a hiking trail to another scenic point which is located in the midpoint of the hill and to observe the Mount Morrissey fall from a different point of view. And we can see the zip line over here. Good hiking time over here. Now we're heading back to our afternoon activity. Here is more like the dramatic movie view when the hero and the heroine miss each other on two different vehicles heading the opposite directions. Now we're at the old town of the Quebec City where the history originated. A lot of historical places that we don't want to miss, like shown here is Fairmont Le Chateau a hotel and museum in combined for the royal members, golden stars, and the privileged people. On the way to the Dufferin Terrace, it's very crowded and there are a lot of activities. This is a monument or the statue of Samuel de Champlain the founder and governor of the Quebec City in the old times. The Dufferin Terrace is good for the sun bathing and hiking. You can see the statue of the city founder, the back of the Fairmont Le Chateau and the nice river view overlook the entire city. From here, you can see the Escalier Casco connecting the Dufferin Terrace to the business district. Sneak peek chamber and the dessert stop. Within the Fairmont Le Chateau Hotel, on the first floor, it, there is a nice passage to demonstrating and exhibiting the evolving history of this hotel. At the very beginning in the colonial settlement, this place was built as a military fortress against the potential attack. 
It's not the first fortress, though. The first one was burned down earlier in the 19th century, but this one survived. So nowadays, this place is costing you easily more than 700 US dollars for lodging, conferencing, movie shooting, and other events. This hotel is for sure the symbolic sign of Quebec City, and definitely the most places under the spotlight in movies, videos, and magazines. Fabulous collections. The cannonballs are getting bigger with time. I'd say the old town here is definitely worth of the half day of your time walking around and taking the gourmet here and there. Very colorful and historical tour around this business district of Champlain. It feels very different from that in the US and I definitely like walking around here. It makes me feel like living in a different country like in the Europe already. Had a very nice walk around Rue St. Louis. I believe this township reserved the only surviving fortress across the entire North America. So it's very worth visiting and walking around, see these historical sites and feeling the breeze of the history and the destiny. At the end of this trip, we were very hungry and tired, so we decided to go to the Continental for a classic French cuisine. We arrived here at 4.30 and we are literally the first guest of this place. Nice interior environment and it looks uh, very old school and traditional. This place is pretty much the old school cuisine and the biggest differentiation point from the new school of the French cuisine is that they're gonna cook in front of the guest right by your table. Escargot or the snails are my favorite dish. 
In my previous experience, I usually ordered the snails without the shell. So actually, this is my first time to taste the snail with the shell. The snail itself tastes similar with or without the shell. So I guess it's just a matter of the the slightly different way of cooking. And my all-time favorite cuisine is the pan-seared fagua, which is a goose liver. The difference here compared to my previous experience that I feel it's a very thin cut of the goose liver. Not sure if it's related to cost or anything. The snail is hot and tastes good, as always. Now is a fiery moment for the seafood and the steak. Let's see. Voila, the entrees are ready to serve. As always, for my little one, it's just a french fry for her. And this time it's authentic, literal french fry from the French recipe. Here's a surf and turf lobster. I like this flower a lot. The bread part is a tomato peel, so I kind of dump it. I don't think that's edible. And I really love the crispy flour. It tastes good. For this French meal, we spent uh, more than 300 US dollars, but I think it's worth it. I would recommend this place. If you love the traditional French cuisine too. For my dessert, I picked the creme brulee, and this is just my own preference. I think simpler is better. Usually, I will pick the simplest but the most classic dish for my appetizer, for my entree, and for my dessert. We spent two days in the Quebec City, and when we head back home, we stay one night temporarily in the Montreal again, in the Marriott Hotel, because it's such a long and tiring trip with the little one. The laundry area of this hotel is nice, and it doesn't look like the chain store, but rather a boutique kind of vibe. 
it has a nice outdoor part and also a indoor swimming pool for us to relax. Overall, we all love this trip very much and will definitely come back next summer. I highly recommend this trip to both Montreal and Quebec cities. Both are different from the environments that we live in in the U.S. Especially the French-speaking environment, all those uh, interesting historical sites, the natural beauty and the differences in the flavor, in the highway and everything. Hope you guys enjoyed this video traveling with me. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.